Hello, Ray Phoenix here, and welcome to Let's Play Twisted Metal 4, A Sweet Tooth. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, even ever since I did the first LP of Twisted Metal 4, which is when I did it with the Joneses a few months ago. Well, actually, it was only more than a month ago, I think, but I don't know. Time is relevant to me a lot of the time now. So, this is Twisted Metal 4, A Sweet Tooth. A Sweet Tooth is the most overpowered character in Twisted Metal 4, mostly because he's the final boss. This is the first Twisted Metal game that actually allowed us to officially play as the final boss as an unlockable character. It's also the first and only time Sweet Tooth is ever an actual boss in any of the Twisted Metal games. It really packs a powerful punch. It's the most overpowered version of Sweet Tooth you're ever going to see in any Twisted Metal game ever. He's really large, sure, he might stick out as a sore thumb, but at the same time, he's really powerful and strong. Look, they're like, they're like, they're like bombarding me with all sorts of weapons, and they're just really doing anything to me. He's tough like a tank, he has an overpowered special weapon that charges really fast, and this special weapon, this one shot of it, can easily destroy, like, one or two of the weaker opponents. Like, here's one of the weaker ones right now, Pizza Boy. I think Pizza Boy might be a nod to the fact that Twisted Metal is almost a pizza delivery game at one point. <laughs> that guy delivering pizza, the guy looks like Eminem is gonna be delivering pizzas, we just destroyed him now. And now Captain Grimm is all that's left. And of course, Captain Grimm is pretty weak, as you probably figure. Just one shot of her special, and look at that. There's spikes in the front of Sweet Tooth's um, ice cream truck in this game, too, which is really going to do a lot of damage to him. They, like, ram into him, like, in a traditional demolition derby. So now look at that. We're already at the first boss fight, right? We're going to fight against Crusher. Crusher's not going to stand a single chance against us. So Sweet Tooth is, you know, one of the few Twisted Metal contestants that appears in every single Twisted Metal game. And, one of the, and, and Sweet Tooth started off as being a regular contestant in the original Twisted Metal. Then he got downgraded to, well, not really downgraded, but he wasn't part of the main roster in Twisted Metal 2. That's because he was like a ghost character kind of thing, so he supposedly died in the first game. And the second game's about his father wanting revenge on the Twisted Metal competition for killing Sweet Tooth. Twisted Metal 3 did the same thing, where Sweet Tooth's a hidden, unlockable character, but Twisted Metal 3 didn't really make any sense. But that's probably because people at 989 just bought, blindly followed what Twisted Metal 2 was. So that's probably why they made it. But Twisted Metal 4, it actually makes sense why Sweet Tooth is an unlockable character. It's because he's the, you know, the master of ceremonies. The story behind Twisted Metal 4 is that Sweet Tooth took over the... He took over the... He took the Twisted Metal tournament away from Calypso. So now he's the owner of Twisted Metal. He's a master of ceremonies that runs the entire contest. And he's the one that grants people's wishes. Apparently he does have a special magical ring in this game. Which is never seen in any of the other Twisted Metal games. And so with, I just fired a few shots, my special weapon, it's making the game lag like hell. This game becomes really, that's not my emulator, the actual game itself is like, it's extremely laggy when you use this, your special because of how powerful they are, they really does a lot of damage against enemies. And of course, Sweet Tooth still suffers from all the major flaws in this game, like when he goes on his hind wheels and like jumps back and left and right, kind of thing, like he's like a dog doing tricks on a TV show or something like that. So there's Calypso, Sweet Tooth versus Calypso, a classic battle. And of course, we're gonna win, because we're obviously way more powerful than Calypso driving his little truck, his nuke-mobile that fires out nukes. We still have a good chance at getting all- look, we already badly damaged him, pretty much. We set him on fire, we'll set him again on fire, we already destroyed- you, you can really destroy people easy, even if you don't have any weapons, just ramming into Malone does a lot of damage. I keep saying this is by far the most powerful version of Sweet Tooth in any Twisted Metal game ever. That's because he's the final boss, I said so many times before. He's an unlockable. This is actually, out of all the games where Sweet Tooth's an unlockable character, as I said before, he's unlockable in all the numbered Twisted Metal games. This one's actually the easiest one to unlock him in because in this game, you'll, all you need to do to unlock him is just simply beat him at the end of the game, beat the final boss, and beat the game pretty much. Which is actually somewhat easy to do if you know his tricks, if you know how to defeat Sweet Tooth or. He's actually not too hard to beat if you know how to beat him. So this is um, so yeah, this is actually easiest version. Twist Mel 2, he unlocked him by finding a secret code in the New York City level by falling off one of the buildings. But in Twist Mel 2, that game made absolutely no use of the memory cards at all. Same with Twist Mel 3, so it really, it really doesn't really make sense to unlock something if you can game if you can't save it. So that's why I gave Tina Form a code. But Twist Mel 3, I played for Twist Mel 3 a lot. And there's no way at all out of that, and in the actual game itself, how to unlock the game. There's no, like, there's, you, you do have to use a password, but it's not revealed anywhere in the game. I only found it because I went on the internet. I think they originally intended for you to, like, unlock him from beating the game legitimately, but I've done that so many times before, and I've never unlocked Sweet Tooth. So that, so that, uh, whatever it says in the instruction book for that game, that, that piece of information in the instruction book is wrong. It's inaccurate. Maybe they originally intended for that, but somehow scrapped that afterwards. I don't know. But it's a pretty easy code. It's just left, 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 right, right, I think, or something like that. Or was that the code to unlock me? If I were that, or right, 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 left, left, or something like that. It's one of those two codes. 
And so here's the boss, Moon Buggy. Moon Buggy has a special weapon very similar to ours, but it still barely stands any of a chance against us because we're a sweet tooth. He's also really energy efficient too, or I'm not sure he's really more energy efficient, but he doesn't seem to use up as much energy as some of the other contestants when using the en their energy attacks. And it seems to recharge or replenish itself pretty quickly actually, possibly faster than the other regular contestants. And look at that, we just gave him a bunch of hits of all regular weapons, give him a hit for special, and look at that, Moonbug, he's dead. He doesn't stand a single chance, no one in this game could possibly stand a chance against Sweet Tooth. It's really hard to destroy Sweet Tooth in this game. It's almost damn near impossible for the, any of the AI to ever beat Sweet Tooth. Because, especially because the AI in this game is pretty dumb, you're on some of the hardest difficulties. This is not the easiest difficulty in the game, this is one of the more harder difficulties in the game. And the AI is really dumb, the AI in this game is like, really stupid. That's part of the reason why you win a lot in this game, because the AI doesn't really know, doesn't know jack all about actually, uh, about human intellect and how to actually defeat a human player. I think the AI was actually smarter in some of the earlier games, especially in Twist Metal. In Twist Metal 2, the AI was necessarily better. They just had unlimited special weapons that gave them an unfair advantage against the human players. The human players don't have unlimited special weapons. It's not just special weapons, just weapons in general. So you see, we already just killed off one of the weaker ones. Mr. Zombie is nearly dead. And there's Trash Man. Trash Man is not necessarily the easiest, I mean, the, the weakest, the strongest contest, regular contest in the game. He might appear to be really strong, but if you but look at that, I shot a couple power missiles in him. Look at that, he's, all, he's pretty much half dead now. I think General Warthog is probably the strongest regular contest in this game. He even mentions in the instruction book that they drive a, a tank called Trojan that could take an unreal amount of punishment, take an unreal amount of hits. But of course, those still don't stand at all of a chance against Sweet Tooth's special weapon. He's actually so powerful, they could probably survive two blasts of Sweet Tooth's special weapon if he's lucky. Yup, that's how powerful he is. And he's the most and he's the most strongest contestant in the game. His special weapon isn't that good. Warthog is completely different in this game than he was in the other two games. And of course the Sweet Tooth, he's still got all the other classic energy moves in this game as well, such as the shield. The shield actually works perfectly fine in this game. It's not a hassle to get to activate like it was in Twisted Metal 2. And there was no shield at all in Twisted Metal 3, but thankfully 989 learned their lesson on that one. Sometimes not having a shield in a game actually somewhat makes the game easier, because that way now the enemies can't use a shield, which makes it easier to defeat the enemies. But the problem Rogue Trip Vacation 2012 had the enemies constantly use their shields when their health is low, which really does make it annoying. I don't even know how to activate the shielding in that game. I actually prefer Twisted Metal 3 over Rogue Trip Vacation 2012, which I'm sure the original Twisted Metal career is going to hate me for that. They're also going to hate me for the fact that I think this is the greatest Twisted Metal game ever, simply because it's really fun to play, it's easy to control, and it has a ton of content in the game. And a lot of the classic contestants are still in this game. Most of them return as bosses, they're like Sweet Tooth, Bumper, Mr. Slam. It's called Super Slam this game, they're Super Axel. I like to putting Super in front of their name. Kind of like in Twist, well, they didn't do that in Twist ML3 when they brought back Dark Side as a boss randomly. So now it's a boss battle time. We're fighting Super Thumper. Super Thumper's an idiot. If you remember from my last LP of this game, Super Thumper really is dumb. He's driven by a dumb guy. I don't even think it's Bruce Cockburn now, come to think of it. Probably just some dumb guy they found off the street and said, Hey, you want to drive this boss car for Twisted Metal? Like, oh yeah, like, oh, it's probably said, like, oh yeah, sure, I'll drive that car for you. He didn't know he was getting himself into. He's probably some dumb guy that was very, um, expendable. He's probably some expendable dumb guy driving the car. He might explain why he's not a good driver. I don't even think he had a driver's license. Or if he did, he probably found it in a box of Cracker Jacks or something like that. Or maybe, or maybe a box of crack, I don't know. <laughs> Look at that, I just gave him one blast, my special weapon, and he's pretty, pretty badly beat up. He's pretty badly damaged. And I could just use a flame on him. Everything that's kind of dumb about Sweet Tooth's model in this game is that his hair is always on fire on the actual monster truck itself. But if he gets frozen and then unfreezes afterwards, the fire permanently goes away for the rest of the battle. It's kind of annoying, I think, in that sense. You know, on the on the, car, on the car select screen, it actually looks like the, the hair is actually, like, molded onto the the car, the ice cream truck itself, which actually makes more sense, I think. I should have just left it as that. In the original Twisted Metal and Twisted Metal 2, because they use the same model for Sweet Tooth in both of those games, his, his head, the clown head on his truck, is just a 2D sprite that always looks into the soul of the person playing the game. In Twisted Metal 3, they had to use a different model for Sweet Tooth because it's made by different people. Instead, it was just a rotating, head, ugly-looking head of Sweet Tooth on top of the car, on top of the ice cream truck, and they actually used that as a front cover for the Twisted Metal 3 game. But they really relied on brand... Uh, recognition for Twisted Metal 3, assuming people know what Twisted Metal 3, or what Twisted Metal is at this point. And so I just 
Cave of Fire, one of my special weapons. It's really destroying killing, uh, what is that, what is that guy? Orbital and Meter Maid. They got caught, like, both of them got caught in the blast. They're really getting burned up, as you can see there. Because one of them's like a flamethrower. It's like a mix of three different weapons. It, shoot, it shoots out the, 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 what do you call it, like those MRV missiles or whatever they're called. It shoots out one of those. It shoots out Outlaw's weapon from the first three Twisted Metals. It also shoots out the Flamethrower weapon, which is Bumper's we weapon in the first two Twisted Metals. And it was Firestarter's weapon in Twisted Metal 3. And as you see, they also gave the Drag Queen that weapon in this game too. Drag Queen branches a discount dollar store version of Bumper in this game. Sometimes I think, considering how different this is in the first three Twisted Metals, this game didn't even really need to be a Twisted Metal game at all. They could have just removed the Twisted Metal IP from it, left the unique characters in the game, and they could have just marketed it as its own thing, its own Twisted Metal game, you know, like, well, not really Twisted Metal, you know, like its own type of car comic. And that would have been a good idea. I wish they make more car combat games. The people in the Beyond Unlimited server are actually considering making their own Beyond Unlimited themed car combat game. And Linda Morden, of course, would be the main character of it. She'd be like the main mascot of the game. Speaking of Linda Morden, it's been really bad for the creator of Linda Morden lately. First, he's had his character sexualized by some rant by some guy on DeviantArt, and now he's having problems with his characters getting stolen, where people take his character design and say, hey, it's my own character, character stealing, like what Chris Chan does. With pretty much every uh, character that appears in his comic. Like stealing characters. That's a pretty bad thing, I would say, to steal your kid, to steal characters. And again, Road Trip Vacation 2012 had a character that drives a, an ambulance that's clearly a clown. Obviously, they wanted to make a sweet tooth like character in, in Road Trip Vacation 2012. <laughs> And the other cool thing about Sweet Tooth Special Weapons is that it's somewhat similar to Spectre's Special Weapon in which it could go through walls. It homes in on enemies and it goes through walls. It pretty much always finds the enemy, pretty much regardless of where the enemy is. It always finds them and locks onto them. Even if it kills them, they respawn somehow. And, they're in the, and the henchmen are still uh, in the game. They're still in the battlefield. They're going. It's going to find where they respawn and kill them too. You could possibly kill one or more than one life of a player using just using one shot of that's how powerful it is in special. It probably is the most powerful weapon in general in the entire Twisted Metal franchise. And there's the RC car. He's a pretty powerful boss. He has a really powerful laser on top of him. But of course, he's still no match for us. There's so many vans in this game, as someone said before. But taking perspective, there aren't an awful lot of vans. There's, there's only like three that I know of. There's the RC car's boss. That's supposed to be a remote control car. Sweet Tooth also a boss, the final boss of the game. And then there's Goggle Eyes, which some people may have mistaken for Sweet Tooth. I actually did mistake Goggle Eyes for Sweet Tooth once when I first played this game way back in the day. But Goggle Eyes is a pretty good contestant too. I think they were being very unique and original this game. This is a really unique original game. I think this game's a lot better in Twisted Metal 1 and 2. And yet people seem to like those ones more than this one. Maybe they're just nostalgia blind or something like that. Or just brainwash what the creators wanted them to think or something like that. I don't know, it's probably something like that. And so now we're full, and so now we're more than halfway into the game now. We're really getting for this game really fast, because when you play a sweet tooth, you know, you, you kill your enemies easy. It's really easy to kill enemies. Just keep using, you could probably beat this whole game only using the special weapons only. I'm not exactly doing that, but I could imagine using the special weapons only. The sweet tooth is really big in, in the, the speedrunning community. A lot of speedrunners usually play this game as sweet tooth. It's really possible to get from this game in a very fast amount of time. I could do this game in like 20 minutes if I really knew what I was doing a ago. Look at that. I shot Quattro once. Quattro got caught up in my special weapon and he got killed easy. Quattro is weak like Mr. Grimm. Quattro actually is more similar to Mr. Grimm from the earlier games than Mr. Grimm is in this game because Mr. Grimm's a pirate captain for some reason in this game. And of course, we traveled back in time somehow to the year 3000 BC, Amazonia 3000 BC. And of course, I still got my shielding as well too, which actually gives Sweet Tooth an even more unfair advantage. I can still use his shield whenever, even when you fight him as an AI in the final level of this game. He often uses his shield, or often resorts to his shield as a means of protection. It's very rare, actually, and most of the computer opponents use their shields. I mean, they do use shields sometimes, but it's actually very rare. It might even be like an accidental thing or something like that, I'm not sure. I don't know if that was intent if that's what was intended or maybe that was a mistake in the program or something like that. There are a few things that's gonna make come off as bugs, like that like that trick with the where you have to plant all the proximity bot mines on top of each other and it makes the enemies go flying in the air and they teleport there. I don't know if that was intended or not, or if that was gonna be like a 
or that was like something like a glitch or a bug in the game that didn't get fixed. You know, pretty much all software games have bugs, and then it's, it's not possible to make a software or game program saying that that's completely free of bugs. Even Windows versions have, have bugs, and then why do you even keep making update patches for them and updates and stuff like that? Because so obviously they're not free of bugs, obviously. And so I think I so, so look at that. I shot that guy once in my special. Look at that. Mr. Zombie's trying to use his special. I mean, his, Mr. Zombie's special weapon is pretty much the same as Orbital's special weapon. Only Orbital's is actually doing damage to enemies. It just freezes them. But Mr. Zombie's actually does do damage. Because supposedly Mr. Zombie is evil this game. I'd imagine this game were to have a cannon winner. It might very well be Mr. Zombie. Or if, it were, if bosses were allowed, it would definitely be Sweet 2. Sweet 2 would totally win his own competition. And he would have the competition going for, you know, until the end of time under Sweet 2's rule. Which Sweet 2's ruling Twisted Metal, I suppose that idea actually has reoccurred a bunch of times. Well, no, only a few times I've noticed throughout the sequel or the subsequent games. One of them notably was in Twisted Metal Black when Calypso said he wanted to give his contest to Sweet 2 eventually when he retired. And then, and then Twist Metal head on, Sweet Tooth ending Twist Metal head on kind of reflected on that as well too. Look at that, I got two specials now, one to go after that guy driving away from me. You can see Clipso just used his special weapon right there, it's a nuke which causes a lot of damage. It's very similar to Shadow's special weapon from Twist Metal too. Only Clipso's weapon's actually a nuke. It's a downright nuke. He's throwing missiles at me, he's kicking out, he's doing all he can to get me killed. But of course, we know that no one ever kills Sweet Tooth in this game. Sweet Tooth is immortal. Maybe that's why he knows he's truly dead in Twisted Metal 2. Why he kind of came back as like a ghost kind of thing in Twisted Metal. Well, not really a ghost, but it's like he just randomly comes back for different levels in the, in the tournament mode. And, and then he was an unlockable character. You know, there, there, were, there were like suggestions hinting at a lot of things. Possibly storylines that never really took off. I mean, people often bash these Twisted Metal games for having plot inconsistencies to the other games. But what I thought you'll didn't know is that even the canon Twisted Metal games have plot and inconsistencies. Most of them are highlighted in like Twisted Metal 2 and Twisted Metal Head On. But I'll probably point those out later when I eventually get to playing Twisted Metal Head On. I've been playing Twisted Metal Head On on the PS2 a lot lately. It actually is really good. It did involve me having to alter my control scheme because the way the button, the controls are mapped where the D-pad and analog stick are recognized as one and the same by my PC. But yeah, the Raspberry Pi didn't do that. The Fury of Raspberry Pi would actually be, probably be better at emulating PS2 than a PC would, actually. But of course, the current Raspberry Pis are not powerful enough to emulate PS2 yet. I'm still waiting for the day when that happens. I'm still waiting for the Raspberry Pi could actually become a truly fully-fledged computer that may overtake my Windows PC eventually in the future. I'm still waiting for that day. But I managed to omit the analog sticks from the emulator, the PCSX2 emulator, and I got to play through the whole game as well, just as if it was a whole Twisted Metal head on, as if it was playing Twisted Metal 2. It, it, is, it is just like playing classic Twisted Metal. It's, it's actually really easy. Probably is the easiest Twisted Metal game there is. There is the only real challenge you got with playing for the game is Spectre, because he's the weakest contestant in that game. He's even weaker than Crimson Fury in that game. Crimson Fury isn't in very many Twisted Metal games. Some people argue he's in this one. If you could build a car, it looks exactly like Crimson Fury in the Creator Car. Some one person said that suggested that Crimson Fury was considered for this game. They probably were considering bringing back a lot of the classic Twisted Metal contestants for this game, but somehow they ditched that idea in favor of mostly all new contestants, with the exception of War Dog and Mr. Grimm. And Sweet Tooth is a boss, I said so earlier. And so look at that with my weapons. I don't even do need to do any trick or treating. This lawyer this oil rig lover is supposed to go trick or treating around the place and collect weapons and stuff like that. But I don't even need to do any of that because I just have my special weapons which charge really fast and they do a crap load of damage against my enemies. It's, it's a really it's, it's like Sweet Tooth doesn't even need to do much like item scavenging or whatever you call it, like item hunting or, or whatever you call it. And so Meter made and Warthog are frozen. And look at that, I just gave him one shot, I gave it to Warthog. Warthog's probably gonna be totaled or mostly total up, because even though he's supposed to be like the strongest contestant in the game, but no contestant is no match for Sweet Tooth Special Ops. And they do think Sweet Tooth was a little bit too overpowered in this game. I think they could have dumbed down Sweet Tooth a bit. It was a little unnecessary to make him that powerful. But of course, I really wanted to show that he's Sweet Tooth. You know, he's a he's like the he, he, you know, he's a master of ceremonies in this game. He's the main character in Twisted Metal, pretty much. And yeah, in the first two games, Sweet Tooth is a serial killer, but 989 turned him into a goofy, fun-loving clown that just likes candy and treats. It's which, which, which a lot of people thought was kind of an insult to what the character stood for, what the character meant. 
wonder what the character was supposed to be, pretty much. Much but, much, but, they, but they eventually got back to how Switch was supposed to be in the games that fall. In fact, don't you think? I think pretty much all or most Twisted Metal games were made by the original creators of Twisted Metal, except for Twisted Metal 3 and 4, this one being one of them. So now it's the boss time. We actually fight against two bosses, of course, Super Augur and Super Slam. But, of course, they're not... I mean, I could do that trick with the freeze mode, but, you know, if you remember from my real LP, the game where I did the Joneses, you know, that trick almost never really works. All the, all the speed runs make it look like it works, but really, it doesn't. If you're playing a Sweet Tooth, just use your special weapons and other weapons you could find, and you should have no hard time kill with, with killing them. Just killing them. There should, shouldn't be any hard, any like, challenge or any real challenge. There is no real challenge in this game when you play a Sweet Tooth. This is the easiest I ever, run I've ever done of this game with any character. It's probably the easiest Twisted Metal run I've ever done ever. It's even easier than beating Twisted Metal 2 with Minion. Well, it's a challenge of Twisted Metal 2 of Minion with Psychological. You couldn't save the game at all if you played through Twisted Metal 2 with the unlockable contestants min being Minion and Sweet Tooth. Which is why it's, such, it's almost near impossible to beat Twisted Metal 2 as Sweet Tooth for that reason. But Minion's a lot easier because he's a boss. And it's really hard to lose Twisted Metal 2 as Minion. And Minion is in this game as well, too. And he's probably about as par, uh, par as he was in Twisted Metal 2. Actually, no, he's probably a little bit easier in this game. He probably, he probably has less shield. I think in his line is a bit easier beat than he was in Twisted Metal 2. This really is the easiest version of Minion in all the Twisted Metal games ever is in Twisted Metal 4, this one. He's a, he's actually, you actually can't shoot small cars that, that go drive right in front of him. So if you're driving a small car like Micro Blast, you can drive up to him easy and just blast the crap out of him. And you could really get a lot of hits on, on Minion. He's actually really that easy to kill. This gave Super Slam a blast of my special. Super Slam, yeah, they, they, they're they really going for a good alliteration name there. Super Slam, sounds like the name of a lame hero from a lame comic book or something like that. Oh, sounds like a parody hero that would appear in something. Super Slam, I am Super Slam. We're gonna jump on him like in a Mario game and killed him completely. Well, up next we're going to the maze, or Minions Maze is what it said. When it said prepare for, for next level, it said Minions Maze. Now it's just called the Maze. Hmm. Is it really Minions Maze then? Hmm. This demonic, hellish looking maze. I'm still wondering where in the world this is. Is this supposed to be Romania? Or maybe even Greece or somewhere like that? Well, I'll just give them a shot of my henchman special weapon. Look at that meter maid got caught up in it. You know, that means meter maid's pretty much dead. I think, my oh yeah, Micro Blast is in there too. Let's say Micro Blast is gonna end up dead too. Let's get a second one in there for good measure. Yeah, that should be enough to kill Meter Maid and Micro. Oh, look at that Captain Grimm. It's like they're throwing all the weak enemies. I mean, like, does this game even know that I'm way more superior to them in every way possible? The Meter Maid's just right in front of me. Meter Maid's gonna be dead. And Captain Grimm lost half of his health. He's gonna be soon to lose more, I think. Let's drive up to him. Just a little bit. Let's drive up to him. Again. So yeah, he's only about half of his health is on Captain Grimm, but Captain Grimm kind of got lucky because he managed to drive around the attacks. He managed to, could probably is, it is possible to get away from Sweet Chief's weapon. One of the most notable ways is hyperspace where you press up, up, followed by down, down, which does a hyperspace, an energy move that, that exists only in this game called hyperspace. But of course, I know, I've only, the only time that I've ever seen the AI in this game ever use a hyperspace is when it's usually when they're gonna fall off the edge or something, and then they use hyperspace to, you know, so they don't fall off the edge of, of, of something in this game. It only saves them from stuff like that. That's the only time I've ever seen the contestants in this game ever use hyperspace, or ever use the hyperspace feature in this game. And so I think I'm just about won, or, or nearly won this. I'm saying I nearly won this because, well, well look at me, I'm Sweet Tooth, I'm, be I'm being Sweet Tooth, and, and there's only, like, three enemies left I killed off. Look, this level does like that regeneration thing like in Twisted Metal 3 did, where it doesn't give you all the enemies to fight all at once. Like, it gives you them in sections and segments. <laughs> yeah, it gives you them in sections. Like, like, you first like kill off a few of them, and then, or kill off all of them, and then it's regeneration, then it gives you more to fight, because for some reason the game couldn't make you fight all the enemies all at once. I think Twisted Metal 4 did it like this too, as a means of regulating difficulty, which this is a harder difficulty in the game, so it really shouldn't be doing it at this point. Maybe they were just too lazy to have all the enemies come after you all at once, maybe. Maybe they were just too lazy to do all of that. But, uh, uh, but in Twisted Metal 2, they didn't really do that at all. In Twisted Metal 2, they had all the enemies come after you all at once. 
So you have to fight off a lot of, well, so it makes you have to fight a lot of nice. That, that's what adds a lot of the challenge factor in Twisted Metal 2, especially in that Holland Field of Screams. I oh, did that regeneration thing. Holland Field of Screams in Twisted Metal 2. So you have the Antarctica level in that game. Those levels would have been way, even, even the last level, the Hong Kong Crunch, those levels would have been way easier if it just, if it did like regeneration where it only made you fight a few enemies at a time and then it sends you the next ones and the next one stuff. And so that, that actually would have been a much easier easier than then I wouldn't have been ripping out my hair as much especially when you're playing it's like the grasshopper twist metal 2 is grasshopper is a complete total nightmare she probably is the most challenging twist metal contestant to win any twisted metal game ever with grasshopper but her ending is totally worth it at least, they, at least the endings made up for it a lot of the time in twisted metal 2 but actually twist metal 2 had the best endings in any 12 twisted metal games they look like comic books they're really edgy but yet somehow you know they work for what they are Twisted Metal 4 had some pretty good endings too. They're CGI, but they look way better in Twisted Metal 3's endings. And the writing is way better in Twisted Metal 3's endings than Twisted Metal 3's endings. It's like, oh, so you want to do this then? Your wish, it was something stupid, your wish is granted. And they get screwed over. No one gets the better of Calypso in Twisted Metal 3. 989 really didn't know what they were doing when they made Twisted Metal 3. But thankfully, they learned from their mistakes they made this game. I sort of keep saying that's basic thesis of all my Let's Plays is of this game is that Twisted Metal 4 is the best Twisted Metal game there is. And it immediately follows a game that wasn't so good called Twisted Metal 3. Twisted Metal 3 is probably not definitely not the best Twisted Metal game, but this one is because of how much you know better it is than Twisted Metal 3. It's funny how you can make something real way better, like you can turn something to a legendary game if you just change a few things or add something. I actually did play this game on a live stream on Discord a few, a few days ago, and it was kind of whiplash going from Twisted Metal 2 to 3 to this game, because most of them, even though they have the same engine, they have different control schemes. Twisted Metal 3 plays just like the first two Twisted Metals, where you accelerate by pressing the up arrows, or you, just, or you go backwards by pressing the down arrows, pretty much. But this game is just, you, it's actually more like a traditional racing game, where you press and hold the X button to accelerate, you press triangle to go backwards, and you when you tap either of those to, to, to speed up to use your turbo, your turbo is regenerated at the beginning of every level. So if you use up your turbo in one level, you're going to get a free, um, like a free full turbo from the next level, which is really helpful a lot of the time. It's like a twist smell one and two, if you use up your turbo in one level, it continues on to the next level of the game. And your weapons don't carry forward either, which I was actually okay with that in this game, how they did in Twist Metal 3 and 4. I think Twist Metal 3 and 4 actually did do a lot of things better than the first two Twisted Metals did. And so now, this is the final level of the game, the Carnival. So first, we're gonna be, we're just gonna give, there's six enemies in all, but only give us three at a time, because, you know, it's the last level of the game. So naturally, it should be the easiest level of the game. Or maybe this is just all quiet before the storm, because it knows that after this, it's gonna give us the most challenging enemy in the entire franchise, Sweet Tooth, the boss, Sweet Tooth. We're gonna give us some of the more tougher enemies around. Like we see here, General Warthog. But however, if I remember correctly, I don't. I think it, I think this game just man, randomized. I think all the Twisted Metal games, except for the first one, pretty much randomize all the enemies you fight against for each level. I don't think I don't think it's hard coded or hard written in anything of the. I think that more Chinese. But the only game I know that did that was the original Twisted Metal. Apparently, the reason why I did that in the original Twisted Metal was good that there's duplicates, of the same contestant in the same. So she was to the same computer player in the same in the same uh, match, it, it somehow breaks the game or crashes the game. For some reason, they couldn't program it, so it's not going to give you the same contestant more than once in the battle. For some reason, they couldn't do that back in 1995 when they made the original Twisted Metal. But they soon learned how to do that when they made Twisted Metal 2, and then later, these games. So you see, one of them just died, and General Warthog is all that's left. General Warthog, his health is half low, but of course, that means nothing to us. For some reason, our auto, auto log seemed to be wanting to lock on to General Warthog instead of fighting, shooting at the obvious thing, which is right in front of them. You know, it's, um, and, or you could just destroy it easy by doing that twisty turn thing I just did with my, what I just did by steering around. Apparently, that breaks the floor beneath you. There's a logo for a shoe company. I'm not sure how well that shoe company profited by having their, by having their brand advertised in Twisted Metal 4. <laughs> A game that I don't think sold. Well, I mean, it sold good enough to make greatest hits, but it didn't sell well enough to get released in Europe, which is why this game never got a European release. And so, now that we destroyed General Warthog, you see there's still three of our opponents left, three of our 
enemy. There's still left of gravestones here. I don't think the AI can maneuver around these gravestones. At least it would take a lot of, like, um, like brain power, something computer brain power the AI clearly doesn't have for it to maneuver around here. And so it could drive up in here and drive around here, pick up that, and pick and, 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 and pick up some weapons. You mean you pick up the proximity bombs for the mean left to beat the final boss. Yeah, even though I'm being sweet to the cheapest character in the game, I'm still gonna play cheap on the on the final boss. Cause why not? Why not play cheap on the final boss? Oh, and that's the other thing too, this game still has some like broken control moments or control moments that don't really work that well or they're still they're still this game still isn't exactly perfect. It's better than the first three games, but it's still like I said, no twisted metal game is truly perfect. Every twisted metal game has some kind of flaw in it. And like, like I said, Twisted Metal 2 is filled with flaws, and yet everyone still seems to really like that one. They often claim it's like the best one in the series, one of the best games of PS1. Well, for sure, it actually could pass sometimes for being a later PS1 game, but then again, this is a later PS1 game, and these graphics are awesome for PS1 games. It's probably one of the best graphics you could find in a video game. This based video game back in 1999. So there's one more enemy left, and it's the guy we played through my other LP of this game with. The first LP I did of this game, the, the contestant we used, the Joneses, you know, the Griswold family are going on their holiday road, trying to find their, going to go on the ultimate vacation, which ends up being a total disaster. Well, it is going to be a total disaster, because I bet they didn't account for the fact they'll be destroyed by an evil killer clown. Well, I don't think he's necessarily an evil killer clown in this game, but he was an evil killer clown in the earlier games, like to think he was some sort of killer clown in this game. This game makes it seem like he was just some clown that entered the like to compete in Twisted Metal. And he entered Twisted Metal a long time ago, back in the 1900 something. Back in the early days of silent films and he won as it applied in the intro of this game. Maybe you all don't like this game, at least admit the intro of this game is a work of art. Where's the Jones? I think he disappeared somehow. This shooting around there reveals images of Sweet Tooth Henchman. This is the only Swiss Mel game that has Sweet Tooth Henchman in it. There, my special weapon should lock onto the Joneses and have them killed. This is really that good. So, that's gonna do what I've always done before. It's gonna place three proximity bombs right there. And then it's gonna turn around and watch, wait for the good times to roll. Wait for our doppelganger to get blasted off into deep space. Like what happened to Outlaw in the original Twisted Metal. There, we destroyed him, and we won Twisted Metal. Let's watch the ending. You've effortlessly defeated your rivals in our Twisted Metal Tournament! With Sweet Tooth's good graces and permission, we offer you one wish for your heroic and triumphant deeds. Your wish has been granted, Driver! Someone will see you out. Goodbye! And so, yeah, that's pretty much the same ending you get if you win Twisted Metal 4 with any of the boss contestants, because no boss contestant in Twisted Metal 4 has an actual storyline. It's just simply, oh, it's Twisted Metal 4. We have to compete in this game. So yeah, concludes this Let's Play. This is Ray Phoenix signing out.